Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Rani Radhakrishnan and I welcome you all to another edition of our series on making the diagnosis of hematological disorders fun and interesting. In today's episode of The Scatter Matters, where the pictures that we derive from the cell counter tell us a whole story which we learn, which we discover and which we are going to use to solve all our problems in the laboratory day to day. Today's we will be talking about the white blood cell scatter. So we all know that the five part differentials that we are using today give us so much of information about the white blood cells that are present in the sample of blood that we run a CBC. Today's story is all about those scatters that the white blood cells do. We all know that to correctly identify a cell that was of myeloid origin, we used a myeloperoxidase stain. This started long, long ago, ever since the uh, we, we differentiated myeloids from non-myeloids. So the myeloperoxidase stain, which was used in vitro, was time consuming, was cumbersome, and the interpretation was subjective. But if a cell was myeloperoxidase positive, it was definitely of myeloid origin. And a cell that was myeloperoxidase negative was non-myeloid in origin. Even today, we use an anti-MPO antibody in immunohistochemistry and we use it in flow cytometry. But if we were going to use this cytochemical stain in our cell counters to definitely identify a cell and say that it is of myeloid origin, for both differentiation of BLAS and for accurately uh, finding out the differential counts, then that would be an added advantage. And that's exactly what the ADVIA 2120 does in its uh, WBC scatter. So to identify the WBCs, it uses a dual technology, one of which is the cytochemical stain using myeloperoxidase, followed up by flow cytochemical. So here what happens is the RBCs get lysed and there is this stain which is myeloperoxidase and that is applied to the cells within the sample which will be the WBCs. So cells that are myeloperoxidase positive, the granules that, are, that contain myeloperoxidase will take up the stain and with varying intensity they get stained with the eosinophil staining the maximum followed by the neutrophils and then the monocytes. Your basophils and lymphocytes do not take up myeloperoxidase and therefore they will be myeloperoxidase negative. So this clearly differentiates the myeloid, the myeloperoxidase positive cells and the myeloperoxidase negative cells. Then we follow it up with a scatter plot where we will plot the absorbance or the intensity of myeloperoxidase staining which is measured by a tungsten lamp with the size of the cell and this will give you this scatter where eosinophils, neutrophils and their precursors, monocytes, lymphocytes, nucleated reds, this is the noise, platelet clumps, the blasts which are the large cells and you have another group of cells which form the sixth differential or the sixth part different in the sixth part differential the sixth cell which will be your large cell which is not a lymphocyte but is myeloperoxidase negative so it is called a large unstained cell this cell is significant and the numbers of those cells if they are greater than four which could be again dependent upon the laboratory that looks at these uh, slides will need a peripheral blood film review because the large unstained cells can represent anything from 
atypical lymphocytes, reactive lymphocytes, to blasts, lymphoma cells, hairy cells, and so on. So it could be benign, it could be neoplastic. So if it is greater than 4%, it needs to be, the smear needs to be looked at. So this is one scatter which you get after staining with myeloperoxidase. Now, there is a dual scatter here. There is a dual method of measuring the WBCs. And the next method is the basophil nuclear lobularity channel. Because if you remember, in the peroxidase, basophils were not yet counted. The basophils are counted in this channel, which is the, which primarily measures the total WBC count and the total number of basophils. So here again, the RBCs get realized. And this particular um, scatter or this particular method makes use of the property that the basophils are resistant to stripping by acid. So the cytoplasm of the or the cytoplasmic membrane of the basophil is resistant to being stripped by acid. Whereas all the other white blood cells will the cytoplasmic membrane get stripped and only the nucleus gets exposed. So we have another scatter where we look at the nuclear shape and density versus the cell size. So here we plot the nuclear shape and density depending upon the complexity of the nucleus, the lobularity of the nucleus and the cell size. You get another scatter where the basophils will be counted here. These are the basal suspect cells and this will be your polymorphonuclear cells, your mononuclear cells and the blast. So here we only take the basophil count from this scatter and the total primary total WBC count. The rest of it is only used as a comparison for flagging by the system if there is any discrepancy between the baso scatter and the perox scatter. Now what is important is that one must always know the normal scatter of the white blood cells of your cell counter before you go and try and identify the abnormal scatters. So you have to really know where the different cells fall, where the atypical cells fall, where the immature cells fall, where the blasts will fall in your scatter that is specific to every cell counter that we have in the lab. So it, one, from one cell counter, it will not be the same in the other cell counter. Therefore, the primary job is to understand the normal scatter. Once you know the normal scatter, you can always find out what is abnormal about it. Because I always say the more normals your eyes see, it will pick up the abnormal very, very fast. So you have to learn to see the normal scatters before you can easily pick out the abnormal scatters. Now having said this, let's look at a couple of scatters which are specific to different pathologies that are con connected to the white, cell, wi uh, white cells. So this first case is of a 17-year-old male with a slightly high WBC count. And you can see that there are large unstained sites and lymphocytes over here. Apart from that, there are hardly any blasts. So the rest of the scatter looks primarily normal, but the LUC is 12.8 with a lymphocyte count of 59.7 and a flag which says atypical cells present. Okay, so this should immediately call for a peripheral blood re uh, film review. But before that, there are increased LUCs and there are increased lymphocytes and there are no blasts. So we need to think benign. Let's look at another case. Here again, there is a slightly increased WBC count. And again, you have increased LUCs and increased uh, lymphocytes. So LUCs are 17% and your lymphocytes are about 62%. The rest of it seems quite normal. There are again hardly any blasts here in the basophil channel. There are no blasts here even on the perox. So here we are looking at a benign condition with increased lymphocytes and the LUCs, which will be your reactive lymphocytes. 
the LUCs here, which are increased in number, will correlate with the reactive lymphocytes that we see on the peripheral blood film. So this is a case of atypical lymphocytosis or rather reactive lymphocytosis and could be secondary to viral infection or like this was infectious mononucleosis. So looking at the scatter, we were able to come to a reasonable diagnosis and then confirm it by looking at the peripheral blood flow. Right. Now we'll go on to the next case. Here you have a very high WBC count, which is about uh, 2,36,000. And if you look at the scatter, there is such an intense perox flush over here. Just look at the intense perox uh, staining, which is over here. And you find blasts, this white uh, uh, scatter. These are the blasts on the baso scatter. These are the blasts on the perox scatter. But what is very significant here is the intense peroxidase staining, which is even going on to your eosinophilic area. So there is a high myeloid uh, cell count, okay? And there are uh, blasts over here. And if you look at the RBC scatter, you will find mitocytic hypochromic anemia and there are fragments also. There is hardly any platelet. I have not looked at the numbers. I am only looking at this. There is pseudobasophilia. There is pseudobasophilia probably because of the intense peroxidase staining. These are not true basophils. And this inverted V-shaped peroxidase staining with a microcytic hypochromic anemia with uh, fragments and thrombocytopenia. Now, because we're using myeloperoxidase stain over here, we have what is called an NPXI index or it is the, uh, it is the intensity of myeloperoxidase staining. And like I told you, this intense myeloperoxidase flush, which will give you a very high NPXI, which is 18.1. Now, 18, the normal NPXI is from minus 10 to plus 10. So, this is very, very high. Now, this is a very characteristic scatter and one look at this, you should be able to diagnose this case. This is one of those few medical emergencies that we have in hematology and this needs to be diagnosed immediately and the clinician informed, otherwise the patient, it could be fatal for the patient. So, this is uh, AML M3 or acute promyelocytic leukemia. Now here the WBC count is very high. Even when you have leukopenia, because these cells are intensely myeloperoxidase positive, you will still have this high MPXI and a myeloperoxidase flush because those cells are MPO positive. So this is a characteristic um, scatter plot, and one needs to know this to diagnose. So one look at this will tell you that this is APML and of course you can confirm it with your peripheral film. Moving on to the next case. Now here again you have leukocytosis. This is again another characteristic scatter which is a nicely bent um, WBC scatter where you have more immature <clears throat> neutrophilic series, lot of monocytoid cells and blasts. So you have plenty of blasts and if you look at this polymorphonuclear scatter that is present on the uh, from the basophil channel, you will find that usually it is uh, it's, it's a long scatter where here you will have your mature neutrophils here you will find that there are more of the immature cells with plenty of mononuclear cells and blasts. So you have leukocytosis of, uh, and you have a blast suspect of 24%, a monocyte count which is high and an LUC count which is a little high. This 
scatter. Again, the shape of the scatter with a lot of cells in the monocytoid region correlating very well with the basophil scatter where you have more immature cells and you have the, uh, uh, the increase in the mononuclear cells with blasts is typical of acute myelomonocytic leukemia or AML M4. What I am showing you are characteristic scatter plots and we can't assume that every plot will be characteristic but we need to take away lessons from this and try and apply them in our day-to-day -day practice. Now moving on to the next case. This is again a uh, count which is fairly normal and you have very little of myeloid cells. Most of the cells are non-myeloid with an LUC which is very high, 26% with some lymphoid cells. And there is pseudobasophilia also over here with some blasts. So the blasts are present. There is a non-myeloid thing, a non-myeloid scatter with increased LUCs very little myeloid scatter and a pseudobasophilia with atypical cells, a flag, blast flag present over here. Now, despite the normal count, you have to be, uh, you know, suspicious about what these cells would be. And if you, if you remember the earlier uh, scatter, which was benign, which did not show pseudobasophilia, which did not show blasts over here. Here, you have to be suspicious that this could be a malignancy rather than a reactive process. This is a case of acute lymphoblastic leukemia with MPO negative blasts. So here, the important things is there are blasts on the basoscatter and it is MPO negative. So you have to think of all those conditions which will give you MPO negative blast. And in this case, it is acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Now going on to the next case. Here again, you have a high WBC count with most of the cells being lymphoid cells. Very few, most of them are lymphocytes. There are very few LUCs and there is, uh, because of the increased count, you will find the cells are all over and there is a small amount of increase in the basophil because of the scatter. The blast suspects are very low. You will hardly find any blasts over here. So you find most of your cells which are present over here. So here, high count, elderly male, with a high, most of them being lymphocytes and a few being the larger cells, the suspicion should be in favor of a chronic lymphocytic leukemia. What I've tried to do here is to give you just a bird's eye view of what you can get from the WBC scatter. You can diagnose a benign condition, you can diagnose acute leukemias both myeloid and lymphoid and you can diagnose a chronic leukemia also. So it's important that we keep looking at the scatters to be able to derive a lot of information from the scatters which will help you reach the diagnosis with more conviction, with more ease and with more confidence I should say. This is uh, just a bird's eye view into the WBC scatter. We shall be looking more in the subsequent uh, uh, sessions, including looking at the sepsis markers with the WBC scatters. Enjoy looking at your scatters and thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more such videos and thank you very much for your support.